Not too long ago, someone asked me if I would make a video showing more explanation and more detail about how I put a collage together. So I thought that is what I would do today. So I have this collage on my desk and before I glue it down, I wanted to show you how I put it together. This is a collage that I've worked on over a period of about three days. It takes me such a long time because I put them together bit by bit until I am happy with the composition. Basically, I start off with a neutral background. And in this case, I had a focal point. And the focal point is this stamp right here. Um, I said in this case, because sometimes I don't have a focal point, I will just collage and however it turns out is the focal point is the entire collage, not a specific element on the collage. But I wanted to highlight this stamp right here because it's one of my favorites. It's a British stamp. Uh, I don't know exactly when it was issued, it, but it was not too long ago, I would say maybe in the 1990s at some point. It's a series of, of holiday stamps, but it also is very much kind of a winter scene. I like the colorful birds. I like the red post box. Um, so that is the stamp that I wanted to highlight. So when I was looking for pieces, I was looking for things that would help me showcase that postage stamp. So in the case of the color scheme, I was looking for reds, of course, and I was also looking for blue and maybe a little bit of yellow just to pull it all together. And what I came up with was I started with a neutral background. I found this red playing card. I have some yellow here on the map and this blue and this blue over here to kind of help pull out some of the blue on the bird. A little bit more red in this label. And then um, some, these pieces here and this, these three pieces are kind of neutral and they just kind of help balance everything. The real challenge for me in this collage was using papers from so many different eras. So the stamp, as I mentioned, was probably issued sometime in the 1990s or early 2000s. Um, and then I have this piece here, uh, which is from the 1800s. So I have a real range and all the pieces in between these two are, you know, some for me from the 1960s. Um, this maybe also might be from the 1960s. This comes from the early part of the century. Um, and so I, it's just a just a mix of all kinds of papers. And so I wanted to make sure that the papers blended well together and that they did not, you know, they didn't clash at all. So that's why that's why it took me so long to to come up with the papers for this. So anyway, um, I will take everything off and then layer them little by little. I made some pencil marks in the background so that I could tell where to put things back because I might not remember. And what I also did was I took a photo with my camera with my cell phone just in case it's you know not coming together and I don't remember the placement for something I can always go and put them back. These two this paper is on top of this one and this was just a piece of brown paper that I took a rubber stamp and I you know stamped on it with blue ink. I got to choose the color that I wanted to use that I thought would best serve this stamp and again I chose blue even though I've got blue here and blue here. I didn't want to go with the red because I already have red and I didn't want to add green even though there's green in this bird I did not want to add another color to the whole palette so I stuck with blue. Um, it's quite a large piece, so I thought that I would rubber stamp this onto it and then put it back underneath. So let me do that really quick. There we go. 
that looks good. I don't need the ink anymore. So when I put this together, this will go back underneath and then I'll just have that little bit of, of um, rubber stamping showing. Like that, okay? Um, so let's see these I'm trying to now I'm just trying to tell myself what I need to do here these are the backgrounds so these ones will go first first and second third will be this red piece and then after the red comes these two and then everything else so okay so let's see let's see if I can do it so underneath is this old postcard for this stamp show um, I went to a postage stamp show and there was a whole stack of these cards for a stamp show happening in San Francisco or wherever, Walnut Creek. And I asked the person, could I have them? Because there was a big stack and the event was like the next day and I knew they were not going to, you know, use them all. And the person said, yep, sure, take a bunch. And so I did. And they're really nice because they're thick card, card stock. Um, and I knew that I could use them for, you know, creating my own collages on top. So that's how I came to have these. All right, so now when I start to add my layers back on or put my pieces back on, I am going to use double-sided tape because I don't want any buckling on my page, right? So with double-sided tape, I really control, I really can control the flatness of, of the collage, and that is super important. Um, I could use glue stick and then press it or have something weighted on the top, um, but I am just gonna go with double-sided tape. I have this score tape, S-K-O-R, and this is really good for, um, for using in instances like this. So I don't need I don't need a lot, just maybe just the top and the bottom. Um, let's see if I can pull this back a little bit. I don't quite need to be so close up. Okay. And then this was my other other piece. So let me just do this real quick. So this one will go down first. I should have matched it up a little bit better, but that's okay. I don't, I'm not gonna fuss about that. Okay, so next comes the red piece. And I just had this one section. This is, this is all I had, so I have to make it work. And um, I want to be careful that I don't, you know, show this, that that doesn't show in, in my additional pieces when I'm layering. So I know that this at the bottom is going to help me cover up that, but this layer needs to come between. So this goes like this. What I can do is I will glue these together first because I already know where the placement is for these two. Maybe I'll pull it up just a little bit. Okay. Okay, so that's going to be like that. And then, let's see goes and I know I have a I have a marker marked line here so that goes like that I think I think and then the red goes there with this like this okay 
Okay. Now, let's see, where do I want this? Now, here's the tricky part. Which, How far do I want it over here? Maybe... Did I mark it? No, see, I did not mark this. I think it's just with the P, because I wanted the P for pence to show. So I think I'm going to do it like that. Okay, that'll work. So let me get double-sided tape on this. And double-sided tape on this. So now I'm looking at this um, map and my um, piece of these buildings here. Again, I'm just kind of really taking a hard look to make sure that I have everything in the right place, Re reassessing, I should say, because it's all about balance. When you're creating a collage, it's a large part of the flow is where you have things that are placed, right? So if this is my main focal point, I need to make sure that all the other pieces are either not shoved in one corner or, you know, that it's there's a there's a loose flow that your eye will look in different directions. That's why that's why I wanted to add this label for example because I wanted I wanted for a person to you know to see this but then you know have your eye drawn to different areas in the collage different corners of the collage so I'm just double checking to make sure I have the placement in the right spot and I do I think I do so now I will Put down the yellow, the yellow map, um, and then see, you know, where everything else will go. I, this label is blank, so I also could rubber stamp something on it. I have this number four. I don't have a whole lot of other options, so I think I'm gonna just go ahead and do it. Well, you know what? I'm going to put it down and then I will stamp when it's actually, you know, attached to the paper. That might be helpful. So I will come back to that. Okay, so if I'm going to put this here, um, it looks like the label needs to go first, then the map, and then this. So let's, let's do it in that order. The label I will put down with the glue. Um, just because it's a very small piece. Okay. Now I can put down the map. Okay, um, all right, now this side, I 
double check, triple check, I think so. It's slightly going over this illustration. Um, and I didn't, because I didn't want there to be a gap between the piece of, you know, the edge of this illustration and then the map would show again underneath. So I think, I think it's good like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna stamp one more thing in here and I think that is it. Um, I could do more rubber stamping if I really wanted to, but I don't think I really need to add anything else. You know what I could do is I could take something like this and stamp it so that it is in these, it, it, it goes over three pieces. Hmm, is that a better option than the number four? I could have just the number four, or I could have this, and it will cut between all three. I think I'm gonna use this. I will test with a blank, a blank piece better. Let's see. Nice clean stamp. That will have to do. So here is the finished product. I hope that seeing this process helps you comprehend how I approach putting together a collage like this. And if you have any questions, please do leave them in the comments and I will answer them as best as I can. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you the next time. Mm -hmm.